Welcome to iLecture Online and here's something new. We're going to be talking about resistors in series and parallel and this is going to be related to what we call direct current circuits where we have the current flowing in one direction uh, from some sort of battery or power source and it's going to flow through a series of resistors and uh, then we have to be able to figure out what the current is that flows through the circuit. Now, in order to get a handle on that, we're going to look at some different combinations, different ways in which we can hook up uh, resistors. And in this case, we're going to look at uh, resistors in series, and we're going to look at resistors in parallel. In series means that the current or the charges only have one path, and they must go through each resistor. In that case, this is called a series connection. Here, the charges have a choice. They can go through one or another resistor, and in that case, we have what we call a parallel circuit. Here's another example of a parallel circuit with just two resistors, and uh, we have a special case in which we can calculate the total resistance or equivalent resistance of a two-resistor uh, circuit like this instead of a three-resistor circuit. But in general, if you want to find the total or what we call equivalent resistance, and the resistors are in series, we can do that by saying that the total or equivalent, that's another way of saying total, resistance is equal to simply the sum of the three resistors. <coughs> Excuse me. Like so. So that's very simple. This is simply equal to 10 ohms plus 20 ohms plus 30 ohms, and so that's equal to 60 ohms. And that's a very simple way in calculating the total resistance. When they're in parallel, however, it's a little bit different. To find the total resistance there, you have to take the inverse of total resistance is equal to the inverse of the sum, or the sum of the inverses of the three resistors. So that's 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So it's a little bit different here. So what you do is you take the inverse of each resistance and you sum them up. So this would be 1 over 10 ohms plus 1 over 20 ohms, plus 1 over 30 ohms. And you can see that the common denominators here is 60 ohms. So we can say that 1 over R total is equal to, we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 6. So this is 6 over 60 ohms. Here we multiply the numerator and denominator by 3. So we get 3 over 60 ohms. And here we have to multiply the numerator and denominator by 2. We get 2 over 60 ohms. And so 1 over R total is equal to 6 plus 3 plus 2, which is 11 over 60 ohms. And of course, then, oh, no, we can't say equal. Now we have to take the inverse of that. So our total is the inverse of that, which is 60 ohms divided by 11, which would be about 5.5 uh, ohms. So that's how we figure out the total resistance or equivalent resistance when the resistors are in parallel. Now, when there's only two of them like this, it's actually a bit easier. We can say that, again, 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. But if we algebraically solve this for R total, you find that R total then can be written as the product R1 times R2 divided by the sum R1 plus R2. So we call that the product over the sum rule. And then if you plug in the resistances here, this is equal to 10 ohms times 20 ohms divided by 10 ohms plus 20 ohms. So this is equal to 200 ohms squared divided by 30 ohms. And that would be equal to, uh, let's see, 6.7 ohms and our total. There we go. So that makes it a little bit easier to work with. I think it does. Some people don't like it that way. But hey, if you like that rule, go ahead and use it. If there's more than two, of course, then you don't have a choice, but you have to use the inverse rule. Now, notice also that when you have resistors in series, that the total resistance is always greater than the largest of the resistors there. So you increase the resistance by placing the resistors in series. However, when you place the resistors in parallel, notice that the equivalent or total resistance is actually smaller than the smallest of the resistors there. Here again, this is smaller than either one of the two resistors there. So notice that by placing resistors in parallel, you actually reduce the resistance because you offer more paths, more choices for the charges to go through the circuit, and therefore the overall resistance has been reduced. 
All right, now that you know how to do this, we're going to show you some examples of different combinations of resistors in series and parallel where you have to actually reduce the series into its simplest or its equivalent resistance, like what single resistor could replace the entire circuit. And so I'll show you some examples of that.